Gracious and heavenly Father, we thank you for today, Lord. Blessed be your wonderful name. Thank you again for the privilege to come to learn at the feet of the Spirit of the living God. Holy Spirit, we ask, Lord, that you will breathe upon this word and minister life unto us through them. Let your word gain entrance into our hearts. Bring it forth illumination unto us and give us grace to be doers of the word. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Praise God. Uh, I welcome you again to our series that has been titled Washing the Feet of Jesus Christ. But today we're going to be looking at kissing the feet of the Master. Amen. And our text is taken from the book of Luke chapter 7 verse 38 which talks about the woman that poured oil upon Jesus, washed his feet with her hair and also kissed his feet. Amen. Praise God. Now kiss in the Bible and even in the word is a symbol of love and affection. Amen. You would see people kiss others because they have love for them or because they have, you know, an affection for them. Even Solomon in the book of Solomon, you know, in the songs of Solomon, used the word kiss, you know, several times. And I just want to read uh, Songs of Solomon chapter 1 verse 2. He said, let him kiss me with the kisses of his mouth. For thy love is better than wine and song. Amen. O thou, Songs of Solomon also chapter 8 verse 1 says, O thou that wait as my brother, that suck the breast of my mother. When I should find thee without, I would kiss thee. Yea, I should not be despised. Amen. Now, in the case of Solomon, Solomon used kiss, you know, to establish or to demonstrate the love affair, you know, between spouses. It is natural for spouses, you know, even to kiss themselves. Amen. Now, furthermore, in the Bible, you see Paul admonishing several of the churches, you know, to kiss themselves, you know, to kiss one another with a holy kiss. Let me read a few of the scriptures. Second Corinthians chapter 13 verse 12 says, greet one another, you know, with an holy kiss. There are several other scriptures. In major writings of the epistles of Paul, he admonished the brethren, you know, to kiss one another. But it's important to emphasize that in all the scriptures where Paul mentioned that the, brother, that, that the brethren should kiss themselves, he was specific, he was clear to mention that he's talking about a holy kiss and not the unholy kiss that you see to be pervasive, you know, even in the world and also in the church today. Paul admonished the brethren to kiss one another with holy kiss. Amen. Now, it's also important, you know, to indicate that though kiss generally represents affection and love in the scripture and also in the world that we live in, it's significant to note that kiss has also been used by some others, you know, to betray and even to kill, you know, a few other people uh, uh, in, in scriptures. For, ex for example, you see, Judas betrayed Jesus, you know, through a kiss. Amen. Luke chapter 22, verse 48, it says, But Jesus said unto him, Judas, betrayest thou the Son of Man with a kiss? Judas betrayed Jesus, you know, through a kiss. Amen. Now, Joab, the military commander of David, also killed Amasa, who is Saul's army commander, you know, through a kiss. And this is contained in 2 Samuel chapter 20, verse 9, which says, and Joab said unto Amasa, Art thou in help my brother? And Joab took Amasa by the beard, you know, with the right hand to kiss him. But Amasa took no heed to the sword that was in Joab's hand. So he smote him therewith in the fifth rib and shed out his bowels to the ground and struck him not again. And he died. So Joab and Abishai, his brother, pursued after Sheba, the son of Bichi, order to betray. Amen. Praise God. So, so in, 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 this, in this example, you see Joab, the military commander, you know, of Saul at that time, Saul of David, killing Amasa through a kiss. He used the kiss as a disguise because any person want to embrace, you know, you, you know, someone kissing them since it's a symbol of love and affection. Amen. So what you're saying is that despite the fact that kiss simply represents or demonstrates a love affair between uh, and, and it's a sign of affection there are individuals that have misused it you know under the guise you know of affection to kill uh, others praise god now the scripture also commands that we should kiss the son jesus if we do not want to perish and you see this in psalm 2 verse 12 psalm 2 verse 12 says 
kiss the son, lest he be angry, and ye perish from the way, when his wrath is kindled but a little. Blessed are all they that put their trust in him. The command here is that we should kiss the son if we do not want to perish, you know, at his hand. Amen. Now, let's take a step further. In the majority of culture that we have in the world, when people kiss one another, the, the popular one, the most common one, is to kiss the lips of the old or of the other person, especially if it's that between spouses or if it's that, you know, which involves an intimate love affair. Amen. Praise God. Of course, there is the other part where you just give a peck, a peck, you know, on the cheek, which is which is basically also, also, also akin to kissing someone, but this time it's right, you know, on the peck, especially a peck rather on the lip, uh, on, the, on the cheek when it's not someone that you have a love relationship with. Amen. Now, another common one is to kiss, you know, the palm of someone. This is also very common. Let me repeat this three again. For those that are into intimate relationship, the kiss is in the form of lip to lip. Amen. For those that are not into, 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 into intimate relationship, it is to give a peck, you know, on the cheek. And then there is also the common one, which is that of kissing the palm, you know, of someone. Now, these are the three you know, that will find to be common, you know, in the world that we live in. Praise God. But in the case of this woman, she did something that is very unique. You know, we established in the last teaching that everything that this woman did in Luke chapter 7, verse, 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 verse 38, which is our scripture, you know, was unique. And here again, she's doing something very unique. There has not been any instance of someone kissing the feet of another person. This woman didn't find it, she, she didn't think it worthy enough for her to kiss Jesus on the lips, to give Jesus a peck, or even to kiss the palm of his hand. As far as she was concerned, there was a great gulf, there was a great gap between her, between her sinfulness and the righteousness and the holiness of Jesus, that she didn't think it worthy for her to kiss to give Jesus a peck or even to kiss the palm of his hand. She could she could have fathom herself doing that. She felt she was so unworthy, a sinner, you know, separated, you know, from the holiness of God that she couldn't think of doing that. And she taught to herself what was the best thing that she could do to Jesus to demonstrate her love for him. What she did was to go kiss the dirtiest part of man, which is the feet of Jesus Christ. Amen. It's like she's saying that, look, Lord, my worthiness is even much less than your dirty feet. Just grant me the privilege to kiss your feet. That's what she requested for. She saw herself as not worthy to give Jesus a peck. She saw herself as not worthy to kiss the palm of Jesus. But she solicited, she pleaded, you know, for Jesus to just allow her to kiss the dirtiest part of his body, which is his feet. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. Who is Jesus to you? Who is Jesus to you? How do you consider Jesus? And to what extent do you love him? Do you love him completely or partly? Do you love his deathiest part? And are you humble enough to kiss the deathiest part of Jesus Christ? Can you pour your love on his deathiest part? The dirtiest part, of course, any service we render to Jesus today is directly to the church. And then to people that we meet on the street and in the markets. Can you humble yourself enough to love, to have an affection for the dirtiest part of his church? The part that people do not take cognizance of. The part that is neglected by everyone. The part that no one wants to have anything to do with in the church. Can you love him enough? to take that as a challenge to address. This woman kissed the dirtiest part of Jesus Christ. Father, we ask in the name of Jesus that the passion that this woman had for you, that made her to kiss the dirtiest part of Jesus, give us such a passion, O oh God, in the name of Jesus. Help us, Lord, to be passionate for Christ, that we'll be ready to give our very best to him. And his service. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Glory to God.